Howdy folks, Alex here. As you can see, we've got ourselves a new project. This here is a Funny Cryptine Ford Focus Electric. These were actually built uh, in a partnership between Ford and Magna, and it's effectively a compliance card. Uh, they built them from, I believe, starting in 2012, uh, maybe 2013, this might be the first year, but they started some, sometime in that time frame. They actually built them through uh, 2019. 2019 was the last year for these cars. And they had quite a few updates the last three years of production, 17 to 19. They had a bigger battery and some faster. Uh, but yeah, they're kind of a funky setup. Uh, half the batteries are kind of taking up a bunch of trunk space, and then the other half are effectively on the back seat where the gas tank would have lived in an ICE uh, focus. Uh, I found this car on a Facebook group, and a guy had owned the car um, after you know, going picking this up. I found out that he had owned the car for about seven years, and it's been a you know pretty great car for him for all that time. Uh, but starting sometime towards the end, later part of last year, started to have some issues. Threw up a you know stop vehicle now warning message, and I think he was still able to drive it for a little bit after that. But eventually, it, it quit driving entirely. He brought it to the dealer, who told him that it needed the main harness replaced, whatever that means and that it was going to cost an astronomical amount. So he decided that he had had his usefulness out of the life of the car, and uh, he was actually just looking to, to give the car away to someone. So I actually picked this car up for free, believe it or not. It looks pretty nice for free, but obviously it doesn't run. Uh, I've been told that the owner said that the car had lost some coolant, which is a little bit troubling. There's kind of a, uh, I don't know if I should say, it's definitely not widespread, but it's a known issue on these cars where sometimes if the battery cells start to expand a bit, it can actually separate the cooling plates apart and cause a coolant leak inside the battery, which leads to obviously all sorts of issues. Uh, he said that the dealer told him that it did not have that issue. So anyways, uh, I picked this car up to kind of experiment with it a little bit. I've never worked on a Focus electric. And it will be kind of a fun car to mess around with. And uh, after I fix it, assuming I do, uh, not 100% sure what I'll do with it. Maybe uh, keep it around as a shop car, maybe sell it. I'm leaning towards just keeping it around because I don't really have a shop car around and it might be nice just to have a car uh, to use it for little customers and stuff. So, anyways, uh, let's uh, take you on a little tour. So starting over here, uh, you can see we've got a little little ding in the fender here. And it's got some sort of weird clear coat failure going on with the front bumper. Not sure if it's been replaced or repainted or touched up at some point. I'm going to lean towards maybe touched up from here over or something because we've got some weird clear coat peeling going on here. But can't complain for the price. Got our charge port here. Obviously this does not have fast charging. That's a little bit slow. Just regular J1772. The later models of these cars did have CCS1. If we take a look inside, you can see we've got leather interior. It's in pretty decent shape. Got a little bit of wear and tear. We've got our carpet and our underhood plastics and stuff in the back seat. If we open up the hatch here, you can see there's half of our battery taking up half the trunk space. So that's kind of a downside to these cars. Not a lot of trunk space, but it's effectively a conversion. If we take a seat in here real quick, does appear to turn on got 87,000 miles on it and while it doesn't show any errors right this second there you go so we've got our stop safely now message 
and uh, the car won't drive if we try to put it into gear. It's got no power, shift to park. So clearly, you know, not running. It does uh, curious if we've got heat or anything. It sounds like I heard the contactors close, but it's a little bit hard to say for certain. Let's see what we got going on here. I got no heat. Let's try if we go all the way to AC. Does the compressor kick on? I don't think so. We'll turn that off. Let's see what do we got in here. We got some paperwork. The guy did throw in a level two charger. That's cool. Just a little portable with uh, looks like 1450 on there. Yeah, 1450. And uh, believe it or not, we've actually got a full factory wiring diagram book, which is pretty sweet. Didn't even know that you could get one of those. For these cars but I suppose that makes sense well someone left their sunglasses in here I'll have to ask him if he wants those back but uh yeah let's plug in and see if we can get some diagnostic info on this car all right so we've got the car in the on position I'm actually going to turn the headlights off there and uh, we've got four scan pulled up it's scanning all of the modules got some DTCs found. Some of these might be because the um, yes that's correct uh, because the 12 volt battery was pretty low so like some of these things from a for ABS codes and stuff you know could be old stored codes or they could be legit messages. So let's go to DTCs so BECM I assume that's going to be a battery battery electronic control module, something like that. So we've got, oh yeah, battery energy control module. So what do we got here? Threshold, okay. So some of these might be low 12 volt battery related. Aha, contactor positive A circuit. Okay, so that is a contactor issue. Hmm, yeah, some of these codes might be... might be some nuisance messages. I'm going to try and clear this stuff and see what happens. Look at that. So I heard both contactors close just now. Oh. Oh, shift to park. Okay. So we do have an error now. Interesting. Okay, we have a very exciting development. I did not realize that the car was not fully on, but you can see our little green indicator here indicates that it's in ready mode. I've got no errors. I go into reverse. Look at that. We have movement. The car runs. So was it really just some kind of weird glitch? Or is there actually something wrong with this car? Uh, let's take it for a little cruise around the block and see how it drives. Alrighty, I got the shop door open back up. 
Let's see how she goes. believe it is driving. Oh look, we have a RAV4 EV out in front here. Let me check with this lady real quick and see what she's up to. Alright, well that lady was here for a speed sensor check. She's going to pull into the shop there. She was actually taking a call. So let's uh, just take it for a quick cruise around the block real quick. Scoot's all right. Still no errors popping up. We're just gonna go around the block here real quick. Nothing crazy. Touchy brakes. Yeah. Back into the shop we go. And now we'll help this help this lady out. Alrighty, well, I kind of skipped ahead on you guys a little bit, um, but after that that last clip uh, where I test drove the car around the block, I brought the car uh, back in and then I helped out the customer that I had that, that showed up. Um, after that, I took the car on another uh, short drive, actually up to my, my neighbor's place. My neighbor has all the the vehicles out here. Um, he's a car dealer. Anyway, I wanted to drive the car over to his uh, spot and show him that I got it running. And uh, on my way back, I had the, uh, the little orange wrench icon pop up on the dash. So I brought it back into the shop, pulled the codes on it, and discovered that it had the dreaded P0AA6 code, which is a high voltage isolation fault. So what I did was I brought the car, um, well, first off I should say that, yeah, I saw that code, had it on the, on the laptop, I actually took a screenshot of it. Unfortunately, I didn't catch it on camera, and the next time that I went to start the car, uh, the code disappeared on its own. So, the car doesn't actually have the code present anymore, but it did have it the one time. So, that led me to my original suspicion of what could have been wrong with this car. So what I did was I pulled the two separate battery packs have some little rubber plugs on the bottom. And what I did was I removed the plugs. So you can see these two on the left side here are dry. And these two on the right are wet. So the two wet ones came out of the lower battery pack. That's the one that's kind of under the, the seats, in, under the back seats. So, anyway, yeah, that confirms that there is indeed a coolant intrusion issue into the battery. So, that kind of only leaves us with a couple of options. What I'm going to end up doing is pulling the battery pack out, clean all the coolant out of it, and kind of explore my options for repair. There's been some folks online that have pulled the packs apart and done essentially that and then they remove all the cooling plates between the cells and actually eliminate the cooling system for the battery entirely. I'm not so sure that I'm a huge fan of doing that but depending on how expanded the cells are in the modules I might not have very many other options. So we'll see when we open it up. Um, ideally what I'd like to do is if the cells haven't expanded too much I'd like to take it apart, clean all the coolant out, and then try to add some additional compression between the modules to keep the 
um, coolant manifolds on the modules from splitting apart. That's what causes the leak, is the cells expand and it causes the... Um, each module kind of has its own manifold that goes into the cooling plates between the cells. And those manifolds just have little sort of bridge connectors between them. And as these cars age and the cells expand, it doesn't have very good compression on the packs. And it actually causes those connections between the coolant manifolds to spread apart. And then it creates a leak. So that's where the coolant actually comes from. So anyways, uh, that'll be the end of this video, but stay tuned for a future video where we'll pull the battery out and see what we can do as far as uh, cleaning it all up, uh, potentially do some modifications to either add some more compression to the modules or, worst case scenario, eliminate the cooling plates entirely, which I would like to avoid if at all possible, but depending on what we come across, we, we might be forced into that. So anyways, stay tuned for, uh, for a future video on this thing, and uh, thanks for watching.